Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dane Ballsman. Um, I'm the urban fisheries biologist who oversees the fins or fishing in neighborhoods program statewide. Um, and I'm going to walk you through just a little bit of background on the fins program, what it is, um, how many lakes, where they're located, and then uh, share my screen here and walk you through um, just some of the information that you can get on the website about the fins program. So um, I think I'm going to start by uh, pulling up the website. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So you should be able to see my screen, which is the main Fish and Wildlife webpage. And if you're looking for the fins or fishing in neighborhoods, um, you can go under the fishing tab and you can either look here in the middle for the fins program, or there's also a drop down. Um, so the fins program is a program that this, the state started in 2006. Um, we partner with local municipalities in most cases. Um, Fish and wildlife, we don't own these lakes, but it's a great opportunity um, that we provide opportunities to close to where large uh, populations of people live. Uh, a lot of these parks have great little ponds, great little lakes, um, but they get a lot of fishing pressure. And if they're not managed or stocked, they can be overfished. Uh, people don't have a successful trip. You don't go back. And, you know, and if they're not intensively managed, um, people just don't have a good fishing trip out there and they come back. So we started the program in 2006 with four lakes, uh, underwent a large expansion in 2009 um, statewide. Uh, we're currently at 44 lakes in 28 counties around the state. Um, we actually added a new lake this, this fall, coming on the fall, that would be at 45 lakes in 28 counties. Um, and the FINS program, we pretty much have a lot of information, it's very useful. Um, for somebody that's getting into fishing. So these lakes are really easy access. Um, like I said, they're in park settings on most of them. So you've got easy access all the way around, a lot of amenities, and a lot of them have walking paths, playgrounds, and restrooms. So just a, a lot of easy access, a lot of amenities, very family friendly uh, for somebody that's you know, you know, is new to fishing, maybe has a family that, that wants to feel safe going to these parks. Um, you might have a little older, mobility impaired, so they're just again easy access and great places to go. Um, we list the stocking schedule, so um, I'll put, um, like I said, the FINS program, we've got 44 lakes in County, five lakes. Um, and these are small, again, lakes that are pretty much one to one good repair position. So it's a win win for both of us. Again, they're getting people out to the there's that map again of where those lakes are out in the state. Um, so again, these, these are big fish that go in times they can do a couple pounds a piece, you know, with larger fish, you can have four and five pounds mixed in. Um, but those are stocked in the spring when the water's still fairly over 123,000 catfish a year. And I want to give a shout out to the Pfeiffer Fish Hatchery, which is one of our two state-run hatcheries located just north of Frankfurt. Uh, they do a wonderful job raising these fish. Uh, they produce all the fish for this fins program and all the catfish that get stocked statewide here in Kentucky. So they do a great job um, raising the fish for the program. And uh, it's kind of a neat process. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of how the process works for these catfish. But um, they've got a lot of hatchery ponds that are that are as a hatchery just north of Frankfurt. And either they drain the water, depending on the, the hatchery pond size, they either drain the water down, or they'll have a really big sand with, with tractors and a big reel, and they'll concentrate these fish down in the sand. And uh, on the back of the sand, they have uh, this live car, where at the back of the sand, all the fish go in this live car. It's got floating, it's got leaves on the top. And they'll pull that over along the bank, and then we've got a big boom truck that they'll dip a net and crowd all the fish into that live bar and dip them up and use that crane to load them on the truck. Um, if they drain the pond down, they get them into what they call the kettle, which is this concrete kettle, and they'll concentrate those fish in, and they either have to dip them out of there and carry them up the trucks and uh, take them into the to the hatchery where the fish are weighed and counted and loaded back on the truck. So it's a, it's a very labor-intensive process.
process. Um, again, 120,000 uh, pounds or, or 120,000 fish is a lot of fish to, uh, to work up in a year. So it's, those, those guys do a great job raising fish for the program. So they bring all those fish into the hatchery and uh, inside there they do what they call sample counts where they weigh and measure the fish, figure out how many fish per pound, and then the appropriate number of fish are labeled on each truck and send out a sign. Trout is, is the other big species that we stock in the Finns Lakes, and trout are a seasonal fishery, so they're stocked in the, in the fall, winter, and early spring, uh, either in October, November, when water temps start to get cool enough, and then again in February and March. Um, trout will not survive in these lakes year-round. It's a seasonal fishing opportunity. Um, usually by late May, the water starts to get too warm. Um, most of the trout have been caught out by that point. Um, you never really see any big die-offs of trout, uh, but they will not survive through the summer in these lakes. And it provides an additional fishing opportunity um, during the winter and early spring when the fishing may be uh, a little bit slow with these lakes. So uh, all those trout, as well as all the trout in Kentucky, come from Wolf Creek Federal Fish Hatchery, which is down below Lake Cumberland. Um, and again, all the trout that are stocked statewide are, are raised in um, we purchase some of those fish as well as get some mitigation fish at, at other water bodies uh, that we stock around the state. But um, we have two warm water hatcheries and then um, the trout all come from Wolf Creek, which is a federal hatchery down at the Lake Cumberland. So those are the big two species we stock. Um, but we do manage these lakes and, and we sample for um, bass and sunfish to see how those populations are doing. So everybody likes to see. Um, big fish pictures, and, and these are just a, a couple of the pictures, and, and people would be surprised that, that a lot of these lakes have some really nice uh, bass and, and sunfish populations. So uh, we've been out this week uh, sampling or surveying um, some of the Fins lakes, which we do to again see how the populations are doing, if the fish populations are imbalanced, or need stock with bass or sunfish. Um, typically, largemouth bass and, and bluegill are self-sustaining. Um, they naturally reproduce in these ponds. Um, the balance can get out of whack, and, and you know, we may have to stock uh, one or the other to get the, the population back in the balance. But we see some really nice bass in all these things. Like, so again, this was just a couple of the ponds we sampled yesterday uh, that we see some really nice bass. Um, and a lot of the lakes around the state, you know, it's not just one or two of the things lakes, a lot of the lakes. Uh, Um, bluegill, red ear sunfish, and hybrid sunfish are another species that we do stock in the FINS program. Um, this picture on the left in the bottom is a, is a hybrid sunfish, which is a bluegill and green sunfish cross uh, that we had stocked before in the FINS lakes. Um, usually we stock those in late May, early June uh, in a lot of the FINS lakes, um, depending on, again, what the sunfish populations look like from our surveying. Uh, which Finns Lakes may be having a, a, a fishing event for free fishing weekend. So uh, we do stock some hybrid sunfish. Um, a lot of these lakes, again, have great bluegill and red ear sunfish populations that are naturally reproducing and, and some really nice sunfish out there to be caught. So here's a few red ear sunfish that, that we saw uh, yesterday in a couple of ponds. So um, these get me excited. I'm, I'm, I'm a big pan fisherman. So um, see a nine and 10 inch red ear sunfish. And uh, we saw quite a few of those this week uh, at Second Lake. Um, they're not quite up spawning yet, so I'd say another week or two. Um, if you're a pan fisherman and, and like to catch bluegill or a red ear, uh, during another week or two, it should be really good. Those fish should be up there. Um, and then the regulations, uh, they're standard at all the lakes and in the fence program. And we want to keep this regulations for the FINS program are the same at any FINS lake you go to. So you don't have to worry about the regulations being different. And again, if you go to that web page uh, on the FINS, uh, when you list them all there, you'll see signs at most of these lakes, either a big brown sign or a smaller yellow sign that list the fishing regulations. So these are a little more restrictive than the statewide fishing regulations. Uh, but again, these lakes get a lot of fishing pressure and we're trying to spread out that harvest for as many anglers as possible to enjoy these stockings and enjoy these fish. So, um, so again, those regulations are the same at anything like you may go to. So, um, 
So um, that's just a quick, quick, dirty um, overview of, of the FINS program. And share my screen here. And Easton, if you want to pop back on and, and talk about it, or if you have any questions on the FINS stuff, I'd be, be happy to answer anything you have on FINS. Yeah, Dana, I appreciate it. Um, we were having a little trouble. It seemed like your mic was kind of cutting in and out. Um, so one of the questions that was answered um, was, should we fish Should we fish the fins lakes during or right after the stocking? So just, just your judgment, would you be better to wait for a day or two or try to get there on the same day as the stocking or what? It can vary, really, Easton, and a lot of people will um... – a lot of people like to be there that day, the, the stocking truck being there. I think the day after is, is really good, or a few days after. Okay. Uh, some tagging studies, a lot of those fish you do get caught in that first week, but but I think over half those fish from what we saw in the tagging surveys do make it past that first week. So that first week can be phenomenal, but not all those fish are getting caught those first few days. Um, the catfish seem to bite really well right when they come off the truck and, and we started a segment with Chad a couple of years ago up at Alexandria. Most fish hit the water, and five minutes later, they were biting like crazy. Um, mm-hmm. Trout can be a little more temperamental, and they can take a little longer to acclimate in the pond and start feeding. Um, so we've had, I've had instances where we stock trout, and people go out the day or two after and say, "Well, you guys didn't stock. I'm out here fishing, and the trout aren't biting at all." And and that does happen. It seems like that happens more with the trout than catfish. So. We can stop. I always tell people we can stock the fish, but I can't always make them bite. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, the day after or a couple of days after is usually a really safe bet, um, but it can take uh, a few days for those fish to acclimate, get used to their new surroundings in the water, and, and start actively feeding. So. Right. Yeah. If you haven't, um, if you haven't seen the stocking truck um, at the fins, like that's a that's a pretty cool thing to watch. Um, I know there was a picture too on the slideshow, but. Um, for me, it's cool to, to see your license down at work and see the fish that you helped uh, by buying a license. We helped promote that and provide that opportunity for the department to be able to, to create these fish and breed them and raise them and load them in a truck and drive them across the state to put them in a pond near you. And for me, that's, that's kind of a pretty cool full circle. Um, let's see, we got another question. It's, what's the best trout bait? But for trout, um, prepared like the power bait, the rule of dough bait are really popular. Um, we'll use a really small treble hook and a small split shot, and you can either fish that on the bottom or under a bobber. Um, but those are very popular if you just want to throw those out. Um, a spinner bait, if you're a more active fisherman and want to throw out the bait and retrieve it, um, a little inline spinner like a rooster tail, and okay. very effective for, for trout. Yeah. Um, and again, those are cheap and expensive. Um, you know, if they just have a little spinner, you throw those out and then you actively reel in. Um, the one that a lot of people that may be new to fishing may think is odd, and I still think it's a little odd, but uh, uh, canned corn is a very popular trout bait. So that's, uh, I don't know if that resembles a little bit the food that they uh, are used to, but a lot of people catch a lot of trout in these lakes uh, fishing on, on both channel corn. And again, using a small split shot and small treble hook. And that's a very popular bait as well. Yeah. So a lot of people out there, just a, a really good all around bait is, is a red worm um, under a bobber, and that will catch trout, you know, sunfish, catfish, and that's just kind of a, a go to all around bait that you can catch about yeah. it. Yeah, anything in a fins lake, anything in a fins lake, weed red worm, that's for sure. And um, we've had good days on, on rooster tails and uh, corn as well, or like a even a little um, jig, little fly, um, like resembles a little popper with uh, with a tipped with a little bit of red worm or wax worm has done good for us too. Um, I think one more question: um, Peabody WMA, do you stock them similar? Do you stock them similarly to a Fins Lake? So the Fins, Fins Lake, and, and again, I tell a lot of people that the Fins Lake, there's, there's a high name recognition, and it's, it's this nice nomenclature for this for these lakes uh, in urban areas. But there's a lot of other places around the state that we do stop at Fins Lake. So Peabody, right. WMA is a good example. Uh, some of those lakes get trout 
Um, and we list that drought schedule on the, on the web page as well. So I encourage people to go to the web page. And if you search for monthly drought schedule, uh, you'll find some of those lakes at Peabody get stocked with drought. And I believe they've stocked some readier sunfish as well to, to get populations established at Peabody at some of those ponds and then catfish as well. So again, you know, Ben's is, is 40 five lakes around the state, but then we have over a hundred water bodies that can stop with catfish around the state. And uh, don't know the number off the top of my head with trout, but I'd say it's even more than that with trout. So right. we do stock a lot of species uh, in other lakes, but again, these fins lakes uh, get a lot of fishing pressure for when these go yeah. in there are large size. You know, all the trout that go out in the state are large size, um, but some of the other fish are a little bit smaller than it is. Yeah, and it, it seems like uh, what you were saying about the um, the bass anglers not really looking at fins lakes too much, and same with some of the, the serious pan fishing guys. There, those were some pretty quality fish in those pictures, and those, I mean, like you said, those are at every every fins lake you're seeing fish of that quality. Yeah, yeah. There's there's some great lakes um, scattered around the state, and you may have to go to, to a couple of them to find which one. I mean, it's just kind of trial or error fishing a few times. We're following which ones have the, the best bass and best food deal and readier populations. But there's a lot of people at Finns Lakes that you, know, you can catch nine and 10 inch readier and, and seven inch bluegill. And um, they can be great places to take a kid fishing too. And the yeah. mistake people make, I think, is fishing with gear that's too big when they're pan fishing and fishing uh, for trout and pan fish. Again, downsizing, going with a little yeah. bit more, you know, smaller bait and smaller hook. Yeah. Right. Yep. Especially on a, a highly pressured lake. Yeah. Well, as long as no other questions come in, Dane, I think uh, that should wrap your part, part up. Um, I'm just going to jump on and, and screen share mine and uh, walk us through a little bit about our website and uh, different ways that you can look at the website and uh, feel free to chime in on any of those and when I'm showing the maps and stuff, if you've got some other stuff you want to add to, feel free. Okay, I think this is showing up. Um, so I am just on our website. Um, this is our the home page, and if you scroll down, uh, stop right here on fishing. And this is the page that Dane had just showed you as well. A um, couple of different things I want to point out. Um, Dane just took us in here to the. Um, fishing in the neighborhoods page. Um, I'm going to click on recreational fishing. And if we scroll down here, uh, this page has all kinds of information. Um, on the right, you can see the, the gear up and get out list. Um, if you're new to fishing, stuff that you might want to look into purchasing. Um, on the left side, where, with rules and regulations, um, I think that's what deters a lot of new anglers is they don't want to get in trouble. They don't want to do something wrong. Um, and if, if you're going to catch and release, uh, as long as you have a license, then you, there's not a whole lot that you need to worry about as far as uh, regulations. But right here on these first two tabs, um, you can see all the regulations you need. Um, the first one will take you to the guide that we print out, uh, if you haven't seen that. Uh, next, there's um, for new to fishing, there's a couple tabs with information. There's some educational videos on there as well. Uh, then the next tab is the one I want to talk about the where to fish. Um, so the second tab is the Fins Lake, which Dane had just talked about that. If you click on this first one, this is a really cool um, database that has been built, and you can search any county or any city. Um, to figure out where the best lake is or where, where there's water around you. Um, if you don't want to search specifically by the county or the city, you can search 
uh, for what type of access you're looking for. So if you're anywhere in the state and you wanna, let's do just bank fishing access. And when you scroll down, all these lakes that are listed uh, have really good bank fishing access. There's quite a few of them there. You can see obviously that the, the ones that are fins uh, have that noted. If you want to look for small boat only access, click on that one. And it's going to show you all the lakes that are only for small boats. Let's go back to any access and search by county. So say you're an Anderson County resident. You want to see what kind of fishing opportunities you have. You click on Anderson. And that will list the fishing opportunities in Anderson County. This also has a feature for handicap only. Pretty cool to find out what's close to you. Go back to the home page. Fishing. Uh, this will take you into the, the same database where we just were. Let's see. Fish habitat, this is, this is some really good information. Uh, the, the department does a great deal of work to make sure that there's plenty of habitat in the water. And if you're out on a lake and you're wondering if your lake has a department placed habitat, click on this and it, first it's going to tell you what each type of habitat is. And if you scroll on down, it's going to show you exactly the GPS uh, downloads. So if you have a fish finder on your boat and you want the exact number, or if you just want to look at a map, they've done a bunch of work at Barron lately. So if we click on Barron, and this will just give you a, a Google map that shows exactly where every brush pile that the department has put out and what kind of brush pile it is. especially this time of year when we're talking about panfish, a lot of times you can catch um, crappie on these and um, the bass like them as well. All kinds of habitat. Let's see if we click on one. On the left side, it's gonna tell you what it is and the exact uh, latitude longitude so that you can find that. If you have not uh, ever looked into that while you're out on the lake, I suggest you pull that up and give it a try because it, it's got all kinds of good information. This is just a full list of all the lakes we've done habitat work on. Another cool thing I want to show you um, while we're just looking at the website. Is this third tab here where it says fishing forecast and tips. This is a lot of information that we believe has been underutilized by anglers. Um, the biologists create this report every year and it just kind of sits. And um, so this year we're really trying to push it more and get the information out there um, so you all can, can use it. This has every, every lake um, in the state and what the biologists are seeing when they shock. So the first where it says uh, 
the cheat sheet is just a quick view if you don't want to look through the whole report. If you scroll down to the lake that, that you usually go to or a lake that's close to you, um, or if you just want to look at species. So if you, if you want to catch a muskie or you want a muskie fish, um, all the way on the right hand side, you can scroll down. And if it's got a check, then that means that it's good or excellent for that species. It's musky, there's not a whole lot of choices. So uh, you can scroll down and see the five lakes in the state that, that the biologists rank good or excellent for fishing for musky. Maybe you really want to catch a smallmouth. Uh, you can see that not all the lakes have smallmouth, um, but there's several that are good or excellent within the state. So that, that's a quick cheat sheet if you just want to look at that really quick. There's more of them. And then it's going to break it down by body of water as we scroll down. And this would be Barron River Lake would be the actual lake. Right above it was the, the different river sections. But it's going to talk about the bluegill, the catfish, crappie, hybrid and striped bass, largemouth, smallmouth, spotted, white and yellow bass. And it's going to tell you a little bit about what the biologists have seen since last year in each, on each lake. So I highly recommend that as well. A lot of good information on there. If you're curious about different lakes that are around you, uh, click on that forecast and it will give you a lot of detail on different species. Uh, the Blue Water Trails is a, a great piece that's been, that's been put together by the department. Lee has worked hard on this and several videos. It's going to give you different uh, places to put in, different places to kayak. Let's check out Elkhorn Creek. There's a the piece that was in the magazine about Elkhorn, some history on it. different types of fish that you can catch in the Elkhorn. And you can see on this article here on the right side, Peaks Middle Kentucky River. This article actually breaks down um, recommended sections to travel as you go down the Elkhorn. And a really good detailed map of the Elkhorn. Go back and try a different one. Paddling access in Kentucky is, is really pretty good if you can look into it and figure out the ins and outs of it. Go back to Barron River. Now this is talking about below the dam. Good map for you. And just like the other one, there's gonna be um, some history, places to click to find the flow, see how high the water is or how quick it's moving and some fishing tips for it. Lots of good information on the Blue Water Trail stuff. If you're interested in swift water or moving water, kayaking, canoeing, floating, uh, you definitely want to check out the Blue Water Trails. And another link for the lakes with fish attractors, special trout streams, voluntary public access or private land, the seasonal catch and release trout streams, smallmouth streams if you're into uh, targeting a smallmouth, and lake information. So this is one that, that we get asked a lot is how can we find out more information about the bigger lakes? If you wanna learn more about Barron River, click on the Louisville district. 
and it's going to bring up a lot more information about that lake. Click on Taylorsville, bring you back to more water information for that lake. One important thing to know uh, before you go fishing, or I guess when you are fishing, um, would be fish ID. And that is important for several reasons. You can click on each family of fish and learn more about them. Click on the sunfish family since next week we're talking all about panfish. It's got a, a good picture of each and some descriptions about them. and the stocking information, which uh, Dane already covered pretty well. This is just one, one of our many pages that the department um, puts a lot of time in to, to trying to put information out there. So we really encourage you to get on here and look around. Uh, we try to update as much as possible and keep new information coming. There's more on the stocking stuff. Picture of the hatchery. And another um, interactive map to show where the fish are being stocked. Now we'll say you send the annual stocking maps and we post the trout stocking dates and, and the fin stocking information again because those are large keeper sized fish but if you want to find all the species that are stocked around the state um, this is a good page for that but a lot of these fish are smaller so they're not going to be a catchable or a keeper size when they're stocked in there but if you're interested in, in all these other places this is a good place to look okay that's good information to know do we have any questions come in? Let's see. Two questions. Is there any more questions? Anything that I covered on the website that was confusing? I'm not seeing any more questions. Dane, did you have anything else to add? I don't think so, Easton. Again, I, I think if you're new to fishing or, or looking for a new place to go, that, that find a place to fish is, is a really a, a key resource and a great resource. So uh, again, if you want to search, if, if 
there's not a Fins Lake or there's not one of these lakes um, that, that I hit on that are close to you, there's a lot of other great opportunities out there and that find a place that flourishes. Yep. A great resource. Again, yep. in your county, the, the surrounding counties, to see what public opportunities are out there. Right. Yeah, and if you don't have any lakes near you, then there's probably a stream near you with some access. So. All right, Dane, well, I appreciate you joining us, and we're going to wrap this up. Um, like I was saying earlier, next week, um, we encourage you to, to join us and invite your friends, and we're going to have uh, some panfish 101, we're talking about different species of panfish, different habitats, places you might find them, um, some fishing tips for them, and it, according to Dane, you heard it from the man, um, next week it, they should start coming up, the, the pan fishing should get really good. So we hope to give you some tips next week and get you out there and get, get some success pictures maybe. If we have no other questions, we will wrap this up. All right, we'll see you all next week. Thanks.